Hey guys, my name is Batumio, and today a lot of you wanted me to attempt the nail gun sniper loadout. Uh, this consisted of using the CBJMS PDW alongside the 4 times scope and the heavy barrel, but the twist on it, and what made it a little bit miserable, is that I had to use it in single fire mode, or semi-automatic. Normally, this is a fun little weapon to use. Like, granted, it's not the best PDW in the game, not by a long shot, but as long as you're able to take advantage of its strengths, which is the fact that it has 51 rounds in its magazine and it has an amazing hip fire accuracy, you can potentially kill three, four, five people without ever having to reload and just have these amazing moments. But as soon as you don't play aggressively and you slap on the heavy barrel, the four time scope, and have it in semi automatic mode, it turns into this, this great big pile of crap that's I wouldn't say necessarily useless, but definitely struggles in basically every single encounter. Really the biggest thing that was holding back this loadout, which I know many of you are already aware of because you recommended this challenge, is the fact that PDWs are abysmal at a distance because their damage drops off significantly compared to all of the other weapons in the game. For example, the CBGMS only does 12.5 damage at extreme distances. That essentially equates to needing 8 to 9 bullets, depending on where I'm hitting them. Like if I'm hitting them in the leg, I would need 9 bullets to drop them from 100% to 0. I felt like I was throwing rocks or pebbles at my enemy. Actually, I would say that throwing rocks at my enemy would probably kill them faster compared to using this gun with this loadout. It was, it was absurd. I had a moment where I had this epic duel against a camping oblivious sniper. He was way out there, he had no idea what was going on around him, he was just scoping in, trying to find his next victim, and so I proceeded to try to take him out from these extreme distances. I, I, I saw like maybe upwards of 5, 6, or even 7 hit markers fly across my screen, but eventually he realized he was getting peppered at by a paintball gun, and so he slowly moved away from his little camping spot, blocking line of sight, and of course I wasn't able to secure the kill. That happened way more often than I care to admit, and it really just solidified in my mind that if I wanted to be successful with this loadout and complete this challenge with, with some dignity, that I needed to throw out every single notion that I was going to be able to take someone out from those distances and play somewhat aggressively. Sure I am going to be at a disadvantage. I'm going to be going against players who are using the AEK, these really high RPM weapons, alongside the fact that I'm using a scope and attachments that have no business being in that type of combat, but if I wanted any hope of being at least somewhat successful with this challenge, I needed to work around the myriad of different weaknesses that this loadout provided, take advantage of the small amount of strengths, and then hopefully go on some kill streaks. The one thing that I was really striving for was going for headshots as often as I could. That should be a no-brainer. Everyone should be going for headshots, but it was almost a requirement if I wanted to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with AEK users or with basically every other weapon in the game. The, the CBJMS doesn't really have a very fast rounds per minute. It only has an RPM of 700 and compounded on the fact that I'm using it in semi-automatic mode, just simply getting enough bullets down range to take out my enemy who are using these automatic rifles, it's not an easy task. Like, hopefully that is, that is abundantly clear. And so, relying on that headshot multiplier was almost a necessity if I did want to drop some of these players. And honestly, when I was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone who was clearly using these amazing weapons and actually come out of it alive, it was it was very rewarding. Seeing a bunch of bullets continuously fly into the enemy's dome piece and having that four times magnification really giving me a front a front row seat at all the blood and gore flying out of the enemy was was pretty cool. I know that sounds ruthless and it sounds just ridiculous, but it was it was a very satisfying experience. It was made difficult on the fact though that the CBJMS and basically all PDWs have a very high first shot recoil. Normally the CBJMS is a very tame weapon in the recoil department. It's only got a vertical recoil of 0.29, which is really low, and then a left kick of 0.27 and a right of 2.7. And so normally all you really have to do with this gun is point and click at the enemy, compensate a little bit for that vertical recoil, pull down on your mouse or on your controller sticks, and it's going to do all of the work for you. 
But because I had the pleasure of using this in semi-automatic mode, I wasn't able to take advantage of those amazing recoil stats and I had to work around its terrible first shot recoil. This is true for basically all the PDWs, and the nail gun is no exception. It has a first shot of 2.3, and so as you guys can clearly see, in combination with it in semi-automatic mode, with that high first shot recoil, it is bouncing all over the place when I do pull the trigger. And so honestly, when I was able to secure headshot after headshot, it was made all the more satisfying because of these restrictions and because of these weaknesses. Didn't happen very often, and it was the reason why it was difficult to even kill three people in a row, but when it did happen and I was on my game, it, ma it made this challenge. It made it very, very satisfying. Uh, one thing that I wanted to show you guys really quickly though before I take off is this moment that I had on Giants of Corellia. I noticed that a transport helicopter was flying on over, and as you guys all know, I run with a straw, and so I decided to fling a rocket in its direction. I got a direct hit, it started plummeting to the ground, and a few of them had absolutely no faith in their pilot, and decided to jump on out. I proceeded to switch on over back to this terrible loadout, got a bunch of headshots on both of them, and then I noticed that the helicopter pilot was able to salvage the, the chopper, he was able to fly off into the distance, he was going into the sunset on the horizon, and then I thought, no, 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 good sir, you are not getting away from this rodeo, flung another straw into the air and was able to take him out. I thought it was pretty cool, or at least very noteworthy. Uh, but overall, while there were a few frustrating moments here and there, I, I had one round where it was just not going my way. I was getting really frustrated, I was getting slaughtered left and right, and so I did rage quit from one, I'm a little ashamed to admit, but that did happen. But other than that select situation, I had a blast with this challenge. And so for everyone that recommended it, I want to give a tip of my hat to you, because I had a lot of fun, and so I hope you guys did as well. Uh, but yeah guys, that is about it for today's video, I hope you enjoyed. If you have a loadout that you would like me to try next, let me know down below in the comments section. This is a video series that is based off of your guys' recommendations, and so if there is a loadout that you would like me to try with a terrible combination of attachments, or just a gadget that you would like me to use exclusively, let me know down below. Uh, but yeah guys, until tomorrow, have a good one, and take it easy.